this one command. Saving my one line hello world program to disk. This one command is the basis for this entire video. My C64 is connected to a 1541 disk drive using a standard Commodore IEC serial cable. When I press enter, my program will be saved to disk. But what's involved in getting my data from the C64 to the disk drive? Sit back, relax, and find out. The scope of this video, it's going to be limited to exactly one example. What happens on the IEC bus when you save a Hello World program to a Commodore 1541 disk drive? I started out trying to make this a comprehensive overview of the IEC protocol, but using this one example to illustrate some of the concepts. It was too long and it was so boring I couldn't sit through it. So I cut out a ton of concepts like how bus arbitration works and I went for something that's less comprehensive but hopefully informative and entertaining. If you want to know every detail about the Commodore Peripheral Bus Protocols, visit this pagetable.com URL. It's written by Michael Steele and it's fantastic. The Celia Logic 2 UI. I'll spend most of the video looking at this, so let's talk about it. If you've never used a logic analyzer before, this is a digital representation of every signal that crossed the IEC serial cable from the moment I pressed enter on the C64 until the program was saved to disk. I'll zoom in real quick here. The H over here, this means high. That's where the signal on the wire was near five volts. The L is low or near zero volts. And then finally the labels over here. I had one logic analyzer probe connected to each wire in the IEC cable and they're labeled on the left side. Service request, attention, clock, data, reset. The moment you've all been waiting for. What you see here is the entirety of the data. It's zoomed out so you can see the entire transaction. I'll zoom us in to get started so we can see some details. Some quick words about the IEC lines. SRQ isn't used on a stock C64 in 1541. Attention and clock are generally controlled by the C64 and read by the 1541. Data is generally controlled by the 1541 and read by the C64. One exception is during the transfer of data bits, in which case the C64 takes control of both the clock and data lines. Reset won't see any action in this video. So, as you can see, the bus starts out in a dormant state. All lines are high and there is no activity. When I press enter on the C64 to save my program, the first thing we see on the IEC bus is the C64 pulling the attention line low. This tells every device on the IEC bus to pay attention. To acknowledge that it has seen the attention signal, the 1541 then pulls the data line low. It has to do this within a thousand microseconds or the C64 will report device not present. It'll also release clock if it happened to be holding it. Now that the C64 has everybody's attention, it pulls the clock line low. This indicates that it's not yet ready to send a data byte. The C64 pulls the clock line high now to indicate that it's ready to send a byte. The 1541 responds by then pulling data high, signaling that it's ready to receive a byte. There's no timeout on this part of the protocol. Our example only talks about the 1541 being on the bus, but generally the C64 would be waiting for every device on the bus to signal that it's ready. And that could be something like a printer that won't be ready until it's done printing a line of data to paper. The last thing that happens before a byte of data can be sent is that the C64 pulls the clock line low. This has to happen within 200 microseconds, which it does in this case. If it doesn't happen within 200 microseconds, it signals what's called an EOI, or End or Identify condition, which we'll cover a bit later in the video. Now the C64 takes control of both the clock line and the data line and uses them to send eight data bits. Data is valid with the rising edge of the clock, so where you see the clock rising, the corresponding bit on the data line is right below it. The least significant bit is sent first, and in this case, the data line is low where the clock is rising, so that's a zero. Moving right down the line, the remaining bits are zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero. Because the C64 has the attention line pulled low, the 1541 knows to treat this byte as a control code. We can look at this table of serial bus control codes to see what hex 28 means. Base address 20 indicates a listen plus the device number, which is 8, so 28 tells device 8 to go into listen mode. The listen command does a few things here. The C64 is telling device 8, the 1541, that it is now the listener. 
It also implicitly tells any other devices on the bus, even if some other device was previously a listener, that they are not listeners now. With all eight bits having now been sent, the C64 pulls the clock line low and relinquishes control of the data line. Finally, the 1541 pulls data low to acknowledge receipt of the byte. This concludes the transmission of a byte of data on the IEC bus. There's another byte of data to process. I'll omit details here because they're unchanged from the last byte the C64 sent. This time the byte that was sent is hex F1. Let's look back at our chart and see what that means. F1 is an open command with the secondary address or channel set to 1. The open command requires the C64 to send an additional piece of data to the 1541. The file name. I mentioned a bit ago that the 1541 knew to process bytes as control codes when ATN was pulled low. Because the C64 now wants to send raw data to the 1541, here it releases the attention line high. Let's watch as the C64 sends the file name H-E-L-L-O across the IEC bus to the 1541. Earlier I said that when we came across an example of an EOI event, I'd explain that. An EOI took place just before the C64 sent the final O from hello, so I have to scroll back a bit to show you how it works. The sequence starts like a normal byte transmission. The C64 releases clock high to indicate that it's ready to send a byte. The 1541 acknowledges that by releasing the data line high, indicating that it's ready to receive a byte. Here's where the EOI happens. If the C64 doesn't respond by pulling clock low within 200 microseconds, the 1541 recognizes that this is an EOI signal from the C64, meaning the next byte will be the last one transmitted. So after 200 microseconds, in this case a bit over 600 microseconds, the 1541 acknowledges the EOI event by pulling data low for at least 60 microseconds. After this, bit transmission proceeds normally. The C64 prepares to send another command byte by pulling the attention line low. That command byte is 3F. I'll refer again to the list of CBM serial bus control codes to see that it's an unlisten command. This tells every device on the bus to stop listening. The bus is dormant here after the unlisten. All lines are released to high. The C64 pulls the attention line low. Same as before, every device must acknowledge and any byte sent will be control bytes. The C64 released the clock line high, indicating that it's ready to send a byte. The 1541 will release the data line high when it's ready to receive a byte. The C64 ended up waiting almost a second and a half for the 1541 to release the data line high. But remember what I said earlier, there's no timeout in this part of the protocol specifically to allow for things like the 1541 opening a file on disk for us. The control byte sent by the C64 was a listen command directed at device 8, the 1541. The C64 sent a hex 61 control byte. This tells the 1541 to open channel 1 for data, which is incoming. If you remember this from the very beginning of the video, you were probably wondering why I involved a machine language monitor to show an example of saving a basic program. Now you know why. What's being saved to disk is the C64's internal representation of your basic program, starting at hex 0801 in memory. What will be written to disk is the start address with the low byte first, so 0108, the pointer to the next basic line, 1408, the line number, 0A00, the basic token for print, 99, then all the hex ASCII bytes that make up the hello world string.
astute viewers will notice there's an EOI. And the last byte has been sent. The C64 sends an unlisten. Then follows up by asking device 8 to listen again. The C64 is done streaming data, so now it instructs the 1541 to close that channel. I have to do a good bit of zooming and adjusting here because it takes 1.78 seconds for the 1541 to commit that data to disk. One final parting word from the C64, unlisten. So that's it for this video. I'm sure that one was a little bit tedious to sit through, but I hope you learned something from it and enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Thank you.